to have her served. And from what I was told this morning, um, from the civil department at the courthouse, they don't show that she's been served yet. May I interrupt real quick? I'm sorry, Your Honor. Am I the she? Because I'd be happy to meet anybody anywhere that needs to serve me. Are you Kate? Are you Casey O'Neill? Yes, I'm Casey O'Neill. Okay, you don't have anything to do with this case. Okay, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm looking for Kaylin <laughs> O'Hara. So if you could just mute back up, we'll come to you in a minute. <laughs> So, yeah, I don't see that she's been served either, ma'am. And so kind of where we're at here is, um, and again, I'll come back to you in a minute, but then it becomes the issue of reissue, reissuing the temporary and trying it again. Yes, and sir. So this can't go on forever, but um, I, I I'll, come back to, I'll come back to you in a couple of minutes. I'm going to finish with attendance here. Okay. And then uh, Casey O'Neill, I know, is here. And then um, Ms. O'Neill, you're the respondent. There's a Tara O'Neill. Is there a Tara O'Neill here? Present, yes. Your Honor. So in Tara O'Neill, um, Casey O'Neill is the respondent. And then Casey O'Neill is asking for an order against Otto William O'Neill. But I don't see any service on that. What's the status of that? Casey O'Neill, I'll come back to you. If you could come on the Zoom call there. So I don't know what you're speaking of. I know there was a note on my previous residence yesterday that said something needs served to me. Okay, you're going to have to speak a little bit louder, please. Um, Hold on. Let me take you off this. Can you hear me? Say that again, please. Hold on, hold on, hold on. There we are, there we are. Can you hear me now? Yes, but I need you to speak slowly and loudly because the speakers are, are working kind of in a weird way in the courtroom here that we're going to get work so on. So I don't, I don't know if I'm, am I, am I trying to be served something from her because she has nothing to do with my case so far? Okay, I don't see anything in the, in the file that says um, Otto O'Neill's been served, but... Looks no, like he has been served. I talked to the police about him. And so we're going to come back to that in a few minutes. I'm just going to find out who's here and then we'll come back. Okay. So it's kind of a similar situation. And so <clears throat> I'll ask you the same question. Where are we headed with this here today? You have the opportunity we can, you know, sometimes when uh, um, you know, things kind of fall by, things kind of die down and people think, well, it's not, not really necessary anymore. And they just kind of let things go. Um, again, other, as you just saw, some people want to reissue and uh, try it again and come back in a couple of weeks. So I guess, where are you with regard to this situation? Well, I definitely want to have it reissued. It wasn't done the first time by the court. Unfortunately, the, ju the judge had told me that he was going to have the police have it issued for the police to serve her, but he never put the order in. And so last time I came on here, I think it was you that put it in, but they put it, when it was served, it was served to the sheriff's department and it should have gone to city of Tacoma. Right, so just right. on Friday, they reissued it and re, re sent it to her, to the, uh, for, for to today. Yes, yeah, yes, sir. Just on Friday, they told me Justin and the civil. Right. Hang on just a minute. So where should it go? Should it go to the city of Tacoma or Pierce County Sheriff's? It goes to city of Tacoma. All right. it was, yeah. So we'll reissue it for today. Thank you. So, ma'am, this will reissue. Did a copy of it? Copy will get sent to the Tacoma Police Department. Okay. Pass. Pass. Please make sure I put four there. Oh. And that's it for today, ma'am. You're free to leave the Zoom call. When, when's the next follow up or hearing? Uh, I'm sorry that I thought I said it'd be January 29th at 9 a.m. That's for everybody. For everybody who gets reissued, it'll be January 29th at 9 a.m. And then you're kind of in a similar situation as um, those other folks in terms of. So uh, it doesn't look I, like service was had on the uh, respondent. Yes, yeah, it's reissued. We'll see you in two weeks. All right. Give me just a moment. Okay. And ma'am, you're, you're going to be responsible for getting him served. Do you understand that? Yeah. Great. All right, ma'am, you're free to leave the Zoom call. Thank you. And then we'll come back to Ms. Kopp, Susan Kopp. What are you doing? So you, yes, have an, you, you currently have an order against Mr. Chapman. I do see it now has been served, and then Mr. Chapton's not here, and um, he's still not here. It's now nine, about 9.20. I'm going to go ahead and sign the renewal order. This order will be renewed. How long has this order been in a 
I do have a couple questions for you before you sign. Go ahead. Um, um, one thing he has been doing uh, as of this past week, when he, the day after he got his uh, paper served to him, is he went to Puget Sound Energy and tried to get my power shut off. And I have documents in the, in the evidence there from Puget Sound Energy, and I want to know if that can things like that can be specifically listed on the permanent order that he's not to mess with that stuff or he's in violation. He's not, he's continually posting on social media. In fact, he even messed with six other residents' power this past week. Okay. So, ma'am, the only thing in front of me here today, I'm not going to give you an advisory opinion saying, well, this is a violation. That's not a violation. Um, okay. It just would not be appropriate for me to do that. The only thing okay. in front of me here today is whether or not this order should be renewed. You've uh, made a petition. You've served to renew the order. Um, you've served that on him. He's not here. I'm renewing the order for um, how long has this order been in effect? It's been in effect for oh, a year. All right. As of tomorrow. And um, yeah, we'll renew the order uh, for another year and then just see where um, we're at. I, re then. I requested in the, in the motion for renewal to have it be made permanent. Yeah. Is this this resident okay. lives in my apartment complex where I live. You know, I don't, I, I'm aware of that. So I, I read the petition. I'm familiar with the, uh, I might even have been the one who did the permanent order, or the, not the permanent, the full order. It very well have been, Your Honor. I've been here a few times because of the gentleman. Yeah. So, ma'am, what I've done here is um, I've signed the order. The order is extended. Instead of, um, as per your comments, instead of uh, one year, this order will exist for two years. I'm not going to do a permanent order. I just don't typically do that, but we'll, it'll be in place for the next two years. Okay. And they'll, the clerk will uh, email me a copy of this, please? Yes. Okay. Thank you, Your Honor. You're welcome. You're free to leave the Zoom call there. Thank you. Okay, so now I'm going to come to the O'Neills. Oh, it looks like Otto O'Neill is here now. So all the Neils are okay. So all the Neils are present. We have Casey O'Neill uh, filing against Otto O'Neill, and then we have um, Tara O'Neill filing against Casey O'Neill. And so all you folks um, here and again, Otto O'Neill looks like recent service. And so because I don't, I mean, I guess is everybody ready to go on that case? I have not yes. been served yet. I can handle that today. Say that, Ms. Casey O'Neill? I have not been served yet, Your Honor. I would like to do that today. You know, someone tried to call me, and I tried to call them back. They have my phone number. Okay. So have you seen the petition then, ma'am? No, Casey Your Honor, I have not seen it. Okay. So with Tara O'Neill, and again, and Otto O'Neill, are you two related somehow? No, we're not, Your Honor. No, I'm not I'm not talking to you, Casey O'Neill. Oh. I'm talking to Tara okay. O'Neill and Otto O'Neill. Okay. Yes. My son. My mother. Okay. All right. How old are you, Otto? 18, Your Honor. Okay. And then um, even though you have the last, same last name, the Tara and K Otto O'Neill are not related to Casey O'Neill. Is that correct? That is very correct. She's related to my ex, to Otto's father. I see. Not blood father. Go okay. Ahead. So, Ms. Casey O'Neill, you need to wait till I'm talking to you, okay? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. So, given that Casey O'Neill, how full is it next week? Because we've we've done a lot to two weeks. What's next week look like? So Casey O'Neill apparently hasn't had a copy, hasn't been served. We can now that everyone's here, I think we could probably email her a copy of that. So she has the op she should have the opportunity to at least see it. Are you folks available in six days next Monday? We could what what would the date be, Your Honor? What's that? What what would the date be? 22nd. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Tara and, and uh, Otto, you folks available next week? Yes, sure. Yes. All right. We're going to, and I, we're temporary is entered in both of these? Okay. So we'll renew the, the temporary to next week, and then um, we'll do, you want to do a notice? You can send notice to both. Okay. So everything is going to get sent to everybody, and then we'll see you all next week. Thank, Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you.
So Mr. Eden, why don't you come on up there and take a seat. Mr. and Ms. Pardee can come on the Zoom call. Um, we're going to, these are two cases where we do have a situation with uh, cross petitions for the record and Shannon Pardee is a petitioner in 23-00, uh, Mr. Eden is a respondent and then in the case 23-00, uh, Eden is a petitioner, Ms. Pardee's, the Ms. both parties are respondents. Um, in that case, this is an, a new situation, well somewhat new to me I think. Um, I, both Mr. Eden and um, the Pardees have been listed as petitioners and respondents in uh, a few cases in the past involving each other. Uh, no permanent order has been entered. As far as I can tell, feel free to either party can stand to correct me. Um, the last time you were in court was in Okay, let me let me double check this. That was dismissed. I think the last time folks were actually in court speaking to to the judicial officer was in August, and so um, a lot has been filed. Some of the things predate uh, um, the August filing, which I think has already been litigated. I'm not too interested in any of that. Um, although I did review uh, what was filed, um, some videos which. Frankly, does a lot of videos don't reflect well on any of the parties who are in front of me here today. But Ms. Parties, and I'll start with you first. You're the petitioner on, and um, how is it that you need an order against Mr. Eaton? And like I say, what I'm going to be interested in is things that have happened since the last time you were in court. I think a judge made a ruling pretty much Everything. things up, up to there. Go ahead. Everything I've submitted to you has been recent. And it's not any old stuff. This is a continuing, ongoing issue. Mr. Eden doesn't like stop. You, I would like you to testify as to the specific things that, that are in the record. So just tell me what's been going on out there. When I try to leave our home, Mr. Eden has a sign up above with these bright lights flooded right at the exit of our driveway on a fence that he put up illegally in the beginning of the year. It just uh, it, and it's just to annoy. There's chairs there. You can't see when you leave. When we're trying to leave, he throws up his middle finger. Calls me a fucking. Try to go out of the driveway like I've written to you. Fifteen year old kid in the morning going to school, and he's out there screaming, calling me a fucking, giving us the finger. Last week when I was trying to take the kid to school, I I don't even know if I've had a chance to write this to submit it. As we're passing his house, it's five forty three in the morning. I'm taking the kid to school because he goes early for gym. And this guy's up in his house as we're passing with a spotlight, spotlighting us through the window. And do you know how bright a spotlight is? And besides the, the fact that Mr. Eaton knows that I have a light disorder and a sensory disorder to that, as well as noise, and he keeps on. It's childish, Your Honor. He's mad about his land disturbance issue, and he keeps trying to create some issue where I'm, I haven't spoken to him, talked to him. Nothing since the before summer of 2022. All of these incidents are simply Mr. Eden either running out of his driveway, running down the road, anything at my kids. The kids leave the front door. He's out there yelling, calling him a fag and giving him a finger. We have a locked gate to keep away from him. We go to the gate. There he is giving us the finger. The video I submitted to you, given the finger. The man cannot leave us alone. He drives past the house to give him the finger. Matthew was home the other night by himself. He went to empty the fireplace ashes in the garbage can that was up by the road because the garbage hasn't come yet. And I get home and Matthew says, Mom, I'm just emptying the ashes. And he drives past giving me the finger yelling, fuck you. He's 12. 12. Mr. Eden does not live in a family home. He lives in his mother's house. He's not a resident of this community. He doesn't care about this community. And he's angry because we have to file a land use action because he filled in an entire hill and it's now flooding my property. So not only am I subjected to his torment every day when I try to go to the grocery store, get my kid to school, I can't even have a caregiver now. The state will not send out a caregiver because he keeps harassing my care people. Every What gives him the right to yell at my guests? 
my company, my care people, my medical professionals, and I have to go around and protect all these? I can't. He will not stop. He's at that driveway over the hill all the time. So now I cannot, I, I'm supposed to have surgery. I need care people and they cannot, they will not come here. I'm in the middle of that. They, the one guy's so afraid he won't even make a statement because he doesn't want Mr. Eden to know where he lives or who he is. And now I have to deal with adult protective services because I'm a vulnerable adult. They have to come out here because the caregivers won't come out because Mr. Eden won't leave him alone. This is new. This isn't old stuff. This isn't his BS saying that I don't behave or I've done this and that. This is all just recent. Even yesterday, he's still up there. Finger, music, noise. Who runs? One, we live in a residential neighborhood. This guy runs his dump truck for up to an hour at a time, filling it full of noise and diesel smoke. I mean, it's it's awful. Fine, I'll take care of that. But in the end term, you're, by not giving me an order, you're it's subjecting our kids to constant emotional abuse. Um, do you have any additional witnesses you wish to have testify? I do not. If you, if I, no offense, Your Honor, but I haven't exactly felt heard by you. So no. Yeah, you have, you okay, I'm going to stop you for a second. Like you haven't been in front you. of me, ma'am. Stop, please. Yeah, you haven't been in front of me. I haven't heard any of these cases. So if you're not offending me because I haven't decided any of these cases. So don't worry about that. But I just want to clarify that I, have, I wasn't I have, the judge I who sat in any of these you. cases. But I didn't drag anybody down here because I didn't think that you would let them be heard. Okay. Um, so let me hear from Mr. Eden. Mr. Eden, could you raise your right hand, please? Do you swear and affirm that testimony you provide will be the truth the whole truth and nothing but the truth yes your honor okay and you're asking for an order an order against um both parties uh, uh um i'll hear from you and again on new information things that uh, um uh that have happened since the last time you were in court again with regard to both parties and then um you can respond to what Ms. Party had said, and then Ms. Party, I'll come back to you, and you can. Um, I'll allow you to respond to what I hear from Mr. Eden and Mr. Party. He's listed as a respondent, so I can hear from him also in the case brought by Mr. Eden. So, Mr. Eden, go ahead. You've been sworn, so yes, yes I'll hear I, from I, you. Uh, obviously, you can see um, what I'm dealing with. Um, I think we should call all those people in. Absolutely. They need to be, if they're their witnesses, they need to be here present for this because none of this has happened. 99% of the stuff that she has told the courts today has happened. I have not done any of these things. She's well, hang on just a second. I, I did see some video, which what appeared to me is you, um, for lack of a better term, giving her the finger. I mean, is that, did you not see is that, that my cell phone or is that the finger? Look to me like the finger. Going up my driveway the day I got a film. Uh, you was there. Looked like when I saw it on the 29th. When you were, and again, I don't, I can't remember the date right now, but um, it was the 29th. It looked like Lana. you were walking. Yes, it was the 29th. I was at Lana's, her neighbors, and I saw some thing with some cell phone too. Yes, but. I was. The neighbor locked herself out of her car. I walked over to help her. I was over there helping her. The tow truck driver showed up. Lana and her have a, an ongoing thing. Also, she just recently this year chased or last year, 2023, chased Aubrey with a rake. And there's a police report on that. Chase uh, who? I don't know who No, she is. chased my neighbor, Lana. So I was at Lana's house that's next door to Shannon Party's house. They have an ongoing argument going also. Shannon ended up chasing her daughter, Lana's daughter, Aubrey, with a rake. There's a police report on this. The other neighbor, Patton, uh, Cindy Guppy, she's also chased their child down the road and wanted to... Um, press charges for burglary charges that her their autistic child was in their driveway i mean this she has police reports with all the neighbors around her this it's just not me your honor i mean this is ongoing the lady in her backyard she calls a flat fat fleshy arm lady ongoing with i mean it's just i mean all my neighbors i've been neighbors with There's these people with 30, 40 years 40 years they're afraid of her because what you're seeing here in this court today 
It's what they do not want to get involved in. We've been in this process for over a year now. I, I can see that. And, 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 and they just keep, she can't control herself. Every time we go home after a court date, Judge Wool or Commissioner Wool, she bashed him on Facebook. And just, uh, if you read the, the, did you read it? It was in my exhibits. I mean, just tore him apart. Um, anytime that she's not happy with anyone, she just goes after them. She went after Evergreen Shores um, Homeowner Association, sued them for years. She makes all this stuff up. None of this stuff is really true. Maybe a little bit. It's like I said, 99% of it isn't. Then after that, after they heard and Bill lost that case, she went after the people that were on the board. Into each individual ones she had lawsuits against them. And her John and Jessica Knudsen were on the board for Evergreen Shores. They were her neighbors at one time also. They have foster children. She attacked them also. Turn them into CPS. I mean, this woman cannot stop with the neighbors. Jessica Knutz and John actually moved because of Shannon. I mean, this is an ongoing thing with everyone. Now she's sitting there trying to sit there. She's trying to bring me into Superior Court over some land issue. She said, I filled my yard in. And that was in 2007. I had a grading permit because I did some work on my yard. I brought some tops on for landscaping. They didn't mm -hmm. move into their home till late 2014, 15. They're going back to public records. Anything she can do to sabotage me and my business, saying that I'm trying to run them over my dump truck. I got dates here that she put on her declaration stating on Friday, 10, 56, November 17th. You know, um, I was her kid was outside in the yard and I was saying, hey, hey, hey. These dates, I wasn't even in town. I was out of state, or not out of state. I was on the other side in eastern Washington. I mean, and I can prove it. I have, I have videos, pictures. I mean, she, this woman cannot stop. And Bill knows it. And Bill is forced to protect her. And, and the Evergreen Shores, no one, the, everyone's watching this. This is huge. She got kicked off the Evergreen Shores board out there. She was on the board. If she wanted to address any issues at that time, she could have addressed them when she was on the board. And now she's attacking me because... She has she has it out for me and she will not leave me alone. She this is what she does. This is free free training for Miss Party. She enjoys this. She builds her cases more and more and more the more she can do this and drag it out. And anyone in any of her cases, even when I talked to the lawyer for Evergreen Insurance Home Message, she goes, There, she's gonna hold this, she's gonna continue this as long as she can, Miss Creedon. This is what she did to us. It was a painful draw, and she, I mean. Oh, my God, it never stops. And I mean, I wish I could bring all my neighbors in, but they're so afraid of her of going through the same thing I'm going through right now. But yeah, they're, 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 they're pulling things out that court cases that have been closed. This has been thrown out twice. I have nothing to do with her children. This is between Miss Pardee not getting her way and poor Bill over there has to stick up for her. Bill don't want to be any part of this. Hey, well, the guy I'm lives in his that, car. You can speak yeah, for I'm yourself. I'll let, I'll let Mr. Pardee speak for himself. Okay, well, Bill lives in his car outside the gate half the time, sleeping in his car. She doesn't allow him to sleep in the house. They're married, supposedly, but he's not allowed to live there. He hasn't lived there for years. She has a problem with Bill. She has a problem with her children. I just witnessed a possible uh, overdose attempt by her oldest son, Jonathan. Both her kids are wonderful kids. They have been mentally abused for years. And you could probably ask her adult children. They've been through the same thing with her. So, you know, I had to contact the, the Ooh, Thurston County Police because I witnessed something that I was concerned that Jonathan might have possibly overdosed. She was begging her husband to take Jonathan to the hospital because he took a bunch of Benadryl and some other stuff, and she wasn't sure. Bill was like saying, get in the house. She kept saying, no, take him to the hospital, take him to the hospital. Bill walked the kid up the driveway and... um. The kids says, I don't want to go to the hospital. Bill goes, we're not going to the hospital. But, I mean, it, this this thing goes on. The little kid comes up and pleads to the dad and says, you need to come down here and get your son. He's effing, tweaking, and he's high. And he goes, tell him to come up. And he goes, he, he can't move. You need to come get him. It just goes on and on. I'm going to stop you for a second. And so, um, first of all, ma'am, you know, I, I prefer that you not interrupt when other people are talking. And secondly, but on the other hand, she's kind of right. This I, doesn't really have anything to do with, I'm asking why you need an order against her. Well, to protect myself from all these cases, all the stuff she's presenting here, if she, okay, the one time she has me on camera walking by her house is because I had to go, I have to go to court again, right? And if you if you guys were going to um, do a temporary anti-harassment order, I wouldn't be able to get within the distance of the ditch to film why she's taking me to court, cause, saying I caused damages for foundation, blah, blah, blah. So when I got permission from Lana, when I went over there to help her because she was locked out of her car, I walked by Miss Pardee's front yard. I took a picture of the culvert pipe in Lana's yard. I went over to Mike's. I took a picture of Mike's culvert pipe. 
Shannon, I walked along Shannon's front yard the, on the road, and everyone walks back and forth their dogs. There's no anti-harassment, no, no reason that I can't walk by her house. I filmed the ditch that is completely filled in where she allows parking for her two of her businesses. People come and go all the time, turn around people's driveways. That makes all of our dogs park. She's got, it's ongoing. She's got people dropping dogs off and people going. I mean, it just never stops. So that's why I walked by her place and filmed the ditch because I'm going to superior court and the courts need the evidence that I need to submit to them in the next hearing they're dragging me through. So, I mean, one court case after the next court case. And why is all this? Why now? They've lived there since 2000, late 2014, 15, and she's viciously attacking me. I can't go out my house. She's got, she's got reports. Oh, he started his truck at 715. Oh, he ran it for 10 minutes. Oh, he started his truck. Now he's moving his motorhome. Now he's doing this. He, she walks, me and the neighbor were standing in the road. She came by. I was like, oh, great. Here comes such and such. She, she comes driving by. The neighbor's my witness. I get the dog. I walk across the street. She says I lunged at her car and stopped her from going in fear. But Darla Burkett is a total witness, saw the whole thing. She said she was willing to tetanus fight. Well, guess what? Shannon got the papers and uh, Darla Burkett's names in the papers. She went on Messenger. They're not friends. Why everyone's on Shannon's uh, Messenger, her, her, uh, her pages for Concern for Every Insurers, is because all the harassing things that she did to everyone out there, so they like to follow it. She is followed by every 300 people had to vote her off the board because she's threatened to shoot at dogs and people. I mean, this woman, it's, it's stacked so high. What about you're asking for an order against Mr. Parker? Okay, that's a, I want protection from her because she continued lying. And, and these are all these lies, lies. Her dragging me into courts for no reason. She said that you used a word that begins with C. With uh, her, I, did you call her that? When she drove by, she drove by. And I had my dog. We got over to this. My girlfriend, my, my not wife's girlfriend is what she calls him. We got to the side of the road. Her window was rolled up. I looked at Darla. I said, effing. Yes, I did say that. Her not, window was up. Not she, to her. Not to her. No. And my neighbor's the witness and saw the whole thing. Shannon's looking straight forward, not even looking at me. Her window rolled up. And I got it on video. There's either so much stuff I didn't want to submit again, because you Mr. already got too much. Again, Mr. Pardee, is he a part of this? Mr. Pardee, he likes to um he and what him and I definitely have some verbal. He he's jealous of me and Shannon because me and Shannon were really close friends for a long time. And I think he thought me and Shannon oh, had wait a minute. you and Ms. Pardee were friends. Yeah, for for like seven years. Right. I, I mean, I got all the screenshots when she was suing Evergreen Shores. She they kicked her off the Facebook page. So I took screenshots and I'd send them to her because she couldn't get them from anyone else. And I still have all that stuff. I mean, everything. I helped her for years, unfortunately, try to sue Evergreen Shores and the people on the board. Okay. And I, I show the phone where I sent them to her. So let me hear from Mr. Pardee. Um, Mr. Pardee, could you raise your right hand, please? You swear and affirm the information and testimony you provide will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do, Your Honor. Um, I'll hear from you. What's your position on all of this? Well, I haven't heard much about why I'm named as a respondent. Uh, there, the stuff against my wife seems to be fairly old. That's fine. And, I, and some of this I'm to blame for because I did file a lawsuit against the HOA back in 2018. I don't know what that has to do with today. Not much. I mean, I, I end up wanting to. I went to the court of appeals. I lost that case. Uh, lawyers do lose cases once in a while, so I lost that case. That had nothing to do with Mr. Eaton. Uh, it had to do with the HOA. Uh, I had filed. I just to, to let the make the court aware under seven one zero five one zero five sub four RCW. I have filed. Uh, Mr. Eaton's correct. I have filed a cause of action against him, Eaton Trucking LLC, his trucking company his mother, Marilyn Eden, who owns his property. And I've also filed it against Thurston County uh, Superior Court, uh, Thurston County Superior Court cause number 23-2-03894-34. So I just wanted to make the court aware of that. If they were not, my guess is the court is aware of that. Um, that is a pending litigation that was just filed in November. And we haven't even gotten full answers from every defendant yet. Um, so that was, discovery will be ongoing. So that will go on for a while, but that, if the court thinks that that's a frivolous action, as Mr. Eden's suggesting, he can defend that, and then the court can rule on that ultimately. I think that really has nothing to do. I don't think that's abusive litigation. Uh, in his petition, I'm responding directly to his petition against me. He mentions he's afraid because we filed, and I think he checked the box for abusive litigation in 2651020. That regards domestic uh, violence or people that are intimate partners. Me and Mr. Eden are not intimate partners, as far as I know. Um, maybe me and my, maybe him and my wife, he alleges we're intimate partners at one time. I'm not sure what he's alleging today, but I am not an intimate partner with him. That, that's what I, what I, I the, bo the box, the box he checked, your honor, 
It has nothing to do with abusive litigation. Obviously, if anybody could run in and get anti harassment orders when a civil action is filed in Superior Court and District Court, that would be an interesting uh, kind of separation of the two court systems. Uh, you can use one court system to prevent litigation and another. I don't think that's what, what, was, what was intended by the legislature. Um, I, I will mention, um, he talked about, I, I did uh, download that video for my wife and we submitted it to court. The video you're talking about where he recently walked around the property, he actually flipped her, flipped her off twice, the, the video camera twice, when he was going over past our river cats and when he circled around back up to his second uh, driveway, which we're litigating, uh, he flipped her off again. So you're correct, Your Honor, he flipped her off twice. Um, he does admit that he, he yelled, uh, he was doing that because he saw my wife coming with her car and my oldest son was in the car. And I think I explained that in my declaration, in her declaration. Um, the met, there's also a mental health matter sign. We submitted photos of that, with, which has floodlights on our property. It's not, it's not a security issue. It's on top of a hill, 20 feet above the right of way. It shines our prop, my wife's property all the time. It drives her nuts. It's there when my kid catches a bus stop. It says mental health matters on it. And it has and it has spotlights pointed towards our house. Um, that's that's in addition to him continually harassing uh, my family by yelling that they're, you know, basically disparaging kind of obs obscene names. He does that pretty frequently. We've had arguments in the past. That's because he's driven my family crazy. Um, he, he 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 routinely calls my kids uh, disparaging names out. All we're asking for today, Your Honor, you don't have to put an order in of him against me. I'm not asking for an order. I'm asking for an order from my kids and my wife because I, I all I want to stop is the language. We can we can sort it out in superior court. Wherever that goes, it goes. That's what litigation is all about. People have a right to file land use actions. Now that that, that litigation is fairly complex. It, it's not as simple as Mr. Eden describes it. He's not a lawyer, so I'll give him the benefit of the doubt. But it has nuisance claims. It has uh, intentional infliction of emotional distress. It has zoning actions. I think his operation of a, of a, of a trucking business in the neighborhood is, is a violation of the of the Thurston County Zoning Code, RL21. We'll get into that when we get to Superior Court. There's other actions too for against the county for, for negligence and failing to stop him from filling his property back in 2007. That has caused water issues. That's 15 feet into the right of way, Your Honor. I can prove that, I have evidence of it. Um, this is all stuff that will come out in Superior Court. But what we need during the pendency of that action, and I also attached, let, let, me, let me mention, Your Honor, before I get off here, I did attach the letter because it was mentioned specifically in Mr. Eden's petition. The letter I sent to his mother back in, I think, in December or November, December of 2022. This is over a year and a half ago, is what he's talking about. I, I gave you a copy of the letter because I wanted you to see it. It's a typical demand letter that we all learn about in law school, Your Honor. Um, it's it's a it's a seven page demand letter. I go through the law. I, I kind of cite the cases. I'm basically giving the owner a, a chance to reach out and talk to me. They never did. And now, ever since I filed that and filed stuff with the county in, in preparation for a claim with the county, which I did in prerequisite to my cause of action in Superior Court, uh, this has been, this is when it all blew up. This is when he became enraged by the fact that I filed a cause of action. Um, he's, he's trying to bait me by saying, oh, he, I'm jealous of him and my wife's relationship. I, have, I don't care if my wife has friends. I've never been a jealous type in that regard. Um, but I mean, I... They were friends at one time, so be it. They're not anymore, obviously. I think the judge hit that on the head. I don't think they're going to be friends anytime, anytime soon. Um, but I, but I'm not a possessive husband. And he said he talks about how I live in my car. So be it, Your Honor. I um, mean, what does that have to do with me harassing him? Nothing. Uh, he wants to humiliate me. So be it. I, I don't, I don't know what that accomplishes, but uh, it's wasting the court's time. He's filed basically. Uh, hundreds of pages of old stuff from previous actions. And the, the, the one classic example is, I think dishonesty with the court and his credibility, I think, is diminished. He says that I chased him down the street, but he doesn't give a date. I gave you the date, Your Honor. It was January 5th of, of 2023. Over a year ago, I chased him down the street. You know what I was doing? I wasn't a party to the action. I was actually representing my wife at the time. All I did was serve, trying to serve documents on him. He was uh, less than 50 feet away from me. I said, Mr. Eden, here, here's some documents. You know what he did? He ran down the street yelling, he has a gun. He knows I don't own a gun. He did that to try to get me shot. He's a dangerous man. He's very aggravated by this lawsuit. I think he's I think he's indicated that he's very aggravated by a civil lawsuit. He's lost control, and he wants to keep on harassing my family. His goal, I've overheard him up there talking to other people, is to get my family to move. His goal in harassing them daily is to get them to move. That's why he runs his and idles his truck at all hours of the day for endless amounts of time. He's not going anywhere with his truck. He's idling it because he wants to drive her crazy. It's noise. It's pollution. 
It's regulated in industrial districts. It's a, it shouldn't even be in a residential district. Where we'll get into that in Superior Court. That's not for you today, Honor. But I want, I, want, I want to point out that this is a serious matter. Um, the HOA lawsuit that I lost has nothing to do with it. I've lost lawsuits in the past, and I've won lawsuits in the past. It doesn't make me a good or bad lawyer. Maybe you can. You might say I'm a bad lawyer. Maybe Mr. Eden thinks that. That's fine. But lawyers file lawsuits all the time. There's litigation in the courts. People, one side loses, one side wins. I'll let you go, Your Honor. Thank you for the time today. Um, do I get to respond to that at all? Yeah, you can. You can do that. And then I'll come back to you, Miss Barty. I have. A, I have a question. I was came up on the um, top. Both Mr. and Ms. Barty brought this up. What's the story on these lights and this mental health matters sign? I got a sign on my fence for a long time. Yeah, how long? Oh, uh, geez, probably over a year. Okay. Um, I so had to build this, a fence since Sorry. this came. Oh, since all this came up this... before this. Before this. I had to build. I had to build that fence because of the harassment I was getting from the party is out of pocket. Okay, so wait a minute. So then the the sign came after the harassment started. Is that what you're saying? No, about? the harassment. I, I, you just said it's on the fence now, right? Yes, on the fence. Okay, now. and so you said you built the fence because of the harassment. So obviously it wasn't on the fence. The harassment started before the fence was built. Was that sign up there before that? It was a different. She was filming me. It, we didn't get to the courts yet. She was filming me in the dump truck trying to leave. So that's okay. when I put the to protect myself because there was phone calls. Okay, but she, I, again, I want to know when the sign went up. For the okay, the time. sign went up after she started filming me. Okay. And Thank then the and why, police, why would you do that? Because she was threatening to sugar my um um gas tank and kill me. Okay. She was like she would get out there and yell. There's um, so much stuff I haven't presented, Your Honor. Go ahead. I'll, I'll hear from you. You could you wanted to respond, I'll let you respond. No, I just protection order from Bill because just like Bill, you know, said himself, he says he was trying to serve me papers. I had no idea that Bill was trying to serve me papers. The prior day before Bill chased me down the street, they went to the police department and said that I tried to run them over and kill them in my dump truck. So then Bill, the next day, Bill comes around the corner of his car at a high rate of speed. He jumps out and I'm looking right. He's eye locked on me and he starts running at me. Well, I see he's got something in his pocket. So I'm concerned. I'm like, what the heck? You know, because just prior they said I tried to kill him. And I'm like, well, you know, does he have a knife? What, what, why does he have his hand in his pocket? So I took off running for the neighbor's house. I took off running to my house. He cut me off where I couldn't get in my driveway. So I took off running to a neighbor's house. I was going too fast. I couldn't turn. So I just kept going. He chased me probably four or 500 yards until a neighbor said, hey, hey, started screaming at Bill. And then I, I got stuck in the neighbor's fit in the backyard and I couldn't get over their fence. So I called 911 and was on 911 for the whole time while I was hiding in the woods. And you can hear all the neighbor's dogs barking and stuff. So I was afraid that Bill was still out there. They actually picked me up two blocks down the road, the sheriff's department. So that's just one incident. Then he sits there and parks outside our backyard across the street. He and him and I get in arguments. He left. Big deal. He came back around and started another argument with me. He's saying that my mom slept with her brother and had me. I mean, it just, him you know, my sperm doesn't swim. Is that why he didn't have kids? He's cussing and swearing at me. It's all on video. I've never submitted any of these videos. The only videos I submit are the police videos. And then when the police come out, you can see Mr. Pardee is sitting there saying, I don't know if he identifies a woman or a man. I mean, he's getting aggressive. I mean, to me, this is aggressive. You don't live in this neighborhood. Why are you coming around? And, and you know, my girlfriend can't even walk outside. With the dogs anymore. Yes, we do have a flashlight. I got a flashlight for Christmas. Big deal. It's a flashlight. She signed, she signed it the day that Shannon might be complaining about something. And my girlfriend's a witness. She was out there with the dogs. So Shannon drove by early in the morning. My girlfriend shined the flashlight down the road. Was my girlfriend trying to cause Miss Shannon to rack or do any of this? No, obviously not. My girlfriend has nothing to do with Shannon. But she, they're going to make it sound like they're going to make it sound like all this stuff. Just like I said, in these dates and times of things they've posted on here, none of this happened. Let's just go back to Bill, though. You know, he just continues harassing. You know, bringing me in all these lawsuits, multiple lawsuits. I mean, why? Why now, Your Honor? When they were on the board, they could have addressed any of these issues when they were on the board for the Evergreen Home Association. But since Shannon tried to kill herself, Bill was actually at the house, and her good friend Darcy was there. Darcy knew that Shannon and I were really good friends at that time. So I was talking to Darcy, explaining to Darcy what I've been witnessing. And she was having problems with ch the children and Bill. 
You know, so I, when Bill showed up there, it was the first time I got a chance to talk to Bill because he hasn't been there for years. And I said, hey, man, this is what's going on. You know, maybe you should know because Darcy said it wasn't good. Didn't think she was going to make it. Shan took a bunch of pills or something. She ended up going to the psych ward for a while afterwards to get help. Like I said, I'm not here to ruin their family. The best interest of, you know, the kids and, you know, the neighbors have all witnessed. There's been multiple reports. And that's why we're here is because the phone calls to Child Protective Services, I was the only one that didn't know that when you make these phone calls, you're supposed to run on and name anonymous. And I didn't. So she believes that I'm the one that's been calling CPS on her. And it's not, it's all the neighbors around her. Her poor kids have never even got to play in the streets or anything because when they, it just goes on and on, Your Honor. I just need protection because they will not, Shannon will not stop. And she has proof in all of her lawsuits with everyone. She just does not give up. She doesn't stop. She won't. And here I am I missing another day of work. How many days of work I've missed? This is, you know, saying I run my truck. Yes, I can run my truck if I want to, Your Honor. I can play music if I want to. I'm not harassing her. She wants anything I do, she feels that I'm harassing her. You know, I got no problems with Bill. Bill don't like me, and that's fine. I never had problems with Shannon until a year ago. I mean, I don't know why they're coming right, after me, Your second. Honor. I'm going to latch on to what you said. I said, I got no problems from Bill, but you're asking for an order. Well, when I he's mean, chasing me down the road, like, okay, so I mean, well, that's my problem. An order against him or not? I didn't have problems with Bill until he started chasing me. Yes, I, right. yes, I would like to have, I'd like to be protected. Why should I live in fear? I live there. He doesn't. Well, he, he does. Well, because he gets, yes. you know, he's, if he's there, he's long enough there to drop off some milk and maybe pick up a kid and drop a kid off. He does not ever, the few nights that he spends How in his car on the street. Is it because he watches us all the time? Hey, ma'am. Okay, hang on just a second. And you know, the, the other judge said there was nothing wrong with my signs. What, what's wrong with my sign? It's Christmas lights. I had a Christmas tree up once, and she said I was intimidating and harassing her by having a little tiny six foot Christmas tree with white lights on it. She, I have pictures and videos of her on her porch, yodeling, doing some crazy things with so many bright lights that it's just a blur. And she has lights on her front yard now. She has red and blue lights just like I do in her front yard. How come they don't bother her, but my red and blue lights across the street bother her? And those the, the spotlights they're saying, they're 60 watt light bulbs. A 60 watt, it's not a spotlight. They just over dramatize everything. That's why I need protection. All I'm doing is trying to go to work. You know, my mom is being drugged into these courts. My mom is 70 years old. She was like, What is going on, honey? I'm like, these people just won't stop. That's it. I mean, they just will not ever leave me alone. And, tell, and here's the deal: if you do an anti-harassment order protection, this is what they did in the last time. All she tried to do is get me in trouble. So I had to protect myself. So anytime that she came within the distance, I had to call Thurston County. Well, they even said, they even had the videos and everything that was submitted to you that she broke it. They, they, they um, um, forwarded this stuff to the prosecuting attorney. But the thing is how this court system works. If you don't have it in with like in five days prior, they don't get it. So guess what? We missed that window. We continue missing the windows. You know, this is not my full-time job. This is Shannon's job. Shannon doesn't work. Shannon has, I don't know what Shannon does. She's got they people coming to go drop dogs off. Okay, so ma'am, you she, just need to. She collects free money. I mean, there's just, I've known, like I said, I knew Shannon for a long time. So I know what Shannon is capable. That's why I'm afraid of Shannon because she will not stop this process. And she's going to continue. Like I said, this has been over a year. What have I really done? What, what one picture, maybe me flipping her off with the phone or who knows? I mean, not her. It'd be her camera. I've never personally flipped Shannon off. She knows that. I don't even see her kids. Like I said, her kids are not allowed to play in Evergreen Shores because of all the lawsuits they've had against people there. So everyone's afraid. They don't want their kids. They don't want Shan's kids around, you know. And then when the Shan's kids were able, when they first moved there, they were showing bruises. The the parents were concerned for the children. This is start this talk. It just goes on and on. So yeah, I need protection from both. So of here, here's what Ms. Ms. Party, do you want to say anything? Uh your honor, there were never any bruises and Mr. Eden's continuous inflammatory statements about my children being abused. That's more harassment. It, it is not true. And my children are tired. of it. I am tired of it. I don't just need the harassment order of protection, your honor. My children do. Mr. Eden is the one that runs out to the road. Mr. Eden is the one that is out there at the road. Yes, let's bring Mrs. Burkett in as she's standing there, closing her eyes, turning her head as he's repeatedly calling me with my 15 year old in the car when I am what trying to leave the neighborhood 
on the public right of way that was put there for me to leave. And with Mr. Eden's illegal fill, I can't go to the right or the left now because he's got an illegal driveway to the left. So he, and with the fence and then the, everything else he put up there, imagine your honor, you're talking over 500 dump truck loads of dirt. So he took the beach away, rose up and- So ma'am, I'm, I'm not, I'm not interested in any of the dirt or I'm any of the, I'm trying to that tell doesn't you matter. What the dynamic is. Instead of it being an egress to a house, he's now with a hill and a fence right over the road. I can't even go to my mailbox. If I go to my mailbox, it's over by him, and then he yells at me. I had a video last night as I'm just trying to exit with Jonathan from my dash cam of him behind the fence giving me the finger. That's a daily occurrence if he's there. He's not trying to ignore us. Let's see these he's daily videos. <laughs> we need to see finger. daily videos. Every day, she's got to water down yes, her yard. Okay, so Your Honor, I have to take uh, videos daily okay. because it keeps track of the noise levels. 40 minutes, 60 minutes of a dump truck or a diesel truck idling in this neighborhood for no reason at okay. all. They don't go to work. So, They're just there idling. So, ma'am, I'm going to stop you, okay? And um, I'm ready to rule. And um, here's what's going to happen today. You know, first of all, I guess I have... I don't know whether I should say this or not. Every time I say that and then say it, people told me I shouldn't have said it, but I'm going to say it right now. Um, you know, seated that individual seated to your left should not be here for all this. They just shouldn't. Uh, I don't know how old that person is, whether he looks to be 13, 14, maybe 12, 13, but this is not an appropriate uh, thing for him to be involved in. It's just not. So there's that. Second thing that Mr. Um, uh, Pardee made a comment about lawsuits, you know, I've won some, I've lost some, and all that sort of stuff. And what's going to happen today is everyone's going to win, and everyone's going to lose. So I'm granting both orders, both Mr. Eden's orders against the Pardees, and I'll grant your order against Mr. Par Mr. Um, Eden. And the parameters of the order, there's not going to be a distance restriction. So you don't need to worry about coming. You can't go onto their property, but you can't do that anyway, because that's uh, um, that that would be trespassing, of course. The basis for the order on behalf of Mrs. Pardee is that you did, by your own testimony, apparently flipped off. You did use the word that she apparently heard. She wouldn't have, he said her window was old, yeah, was heard up, but she found it out somehow. So, I mean, <clears throat> obviously that was heard. I would find that that's uh, harassing behavior. The pattern be sh shown by uh, um, Ms. Pardee and uh, um, Mr. Pardee. And again, I did look at the whole file and uh, I didn't look at the other orders, but everything that's been um, uh, been submitted, you know, on a, you know, I, obviously I'm not out there. I don't live out there. I don't know what's going on, but if this, if a quarter of this, if an eighth of this is accurate, and I believe we've reached that threshold, uh, um, this is just no way to live from either party, either, either the parties or Mr. Eden. And um, so from for the next year, the, the parameters of the order is going to be, and again, I'll find that both have engaged in patterns of conduct uh, uh, that have harassed the other, others. And basically the order is... Issues not to uh, cause you any physical harm, not to contact, including the minors. Don't engage with the minors and don't engage in stalking behavior. There is not a stay away provision given the proximity that you uh, live to each other. There's not like don't come within, you know, don't be out there with a tape measure. Don't come within 500 feet. Don't come in with 100 feet or anything like that. You guys just can't talk to each other, can't communicate, can't communicate with each other and just don't be involved in each other's lives, which is what I think you both want. So what does Mr. that Your mean? Honor. Your Honor, that can mean? I ask I'm a question? I'm not done yet, Mr. Pardee. I'm not done yet. And that doesn't mean that this. I'm not trying to regulate how Mr. Um, Eden runs his uh, uh, garbage trucks or anything like that. Uh, um, there's just, I don't have any control over that. And I don't, you know, what he has to do for that. That's not necessarily, you might think it's harassing, but it's, uh, um, it's not. The basis for these orders are the, uh, interaction and communication or lack thereof that is communicated that has been uh, gone back and forth between the parties is lights. I'm not regulating any placements of any lights or anything like that either. I mean, some, and again, I just can't, 
you know, what might seem harassing to you isn't necessarily, or would, I can't objectively find as harassing behavior, but the harassing behavior, again, is the verbal interaction between all parties that has been shown through the filings as well as the testimony here in court today. Mr. Party, I'm done now. And so now I guess when Mr. Eden earlier had said that you got on whatever social media website you referenced and trashed uh, the previous judicial officer, maybe you both can get on there and trash me here today. But oh, yeah. neither okay. one of you should neither one of you should uh, um, have any communication with the other. So I'm granting your order, Mr. Party, <laughs> that she's that he's not he's not to um, have contact with you, but it's going both ways. Mr. Party, you wanted to say something. Yeah, it's sort of important, Your Honor. I mean, you're putting an order in against me. I don't think there's any evidence of any harassment by Not me, but that's fine. Me. I, also, I'm the attorney. I have to talk to the other side. I have to serve documents okay. on them. Well, I we will, have an agreement okay, to do I, email okay, service. Are you going to make an exception Just for that, minute, Your Honor? I'm going to stop you, Mr. Party, and say, yes, I will include uh, um, language in, in the course of litigation. And What's that cause number in Superior Court? I'll give it to you now, Your Honor. 23-2. Uh, dash zero three eight nine four dash three four and i have an agreement zero, with zero, Mr. Hang on a second. Just, just, just wait a minute let me make sure i get that number except zero three eight nine four dash thirty four yeah twenty three two oh three eight nine four three four all right your yeah, honor, what contact put... am I supposed or what harassing? I don't understand. I haven't talked to him, I don't talk to him, I get in my car and I try to leave. How is it that I'm harassing him? Ma'am, I've said before, uh, um, yeah. based on the, uh, based on the filings, um, combined with your testimony, I'll make a finding that, um, uh, that you have engaged in harassing behavior and, um, an order is going to be entered. Yeah. And, well, uh, if you could explain to me what that harassing behavior is, I'd like to know so that I can prevent doing it in the future. And you haven't told me or proven to me that I've done anything. So it's very confusing. So I'm asking you to point out what that harassing behavior is so that I can get with my caregiver and we can make sure that doesn't happen in the future. The, in the future, what I want to see going forward in the future is just no communication or interaction with Mr. Eden at all. I do not talk to Mr. Eden or interact with him at all. Do I record okay. my front yard? Yeah, based on the, you bet yeah, I do, yeah. and I'm going to keep doing it. I don't talk to him. I try to leave my driveway. He's the one that comes and yells at me. So I'm asking again for you to clarify how I get how I stop harassing him when I don't talk to him. I don't flip him off. I don't go near him. I simply leave my driveway, enter and exit. So how is it you would like me to not harass him when I'm already not doing anything? What more would you like me to not do? Would you like me to stop breathing? Because I'm really confused. You know, Judge Wilcox he made it where he couldn't represent her. Uh, Judge, Judge, Judge Meyer, I, I, I'm very confused, though, one thing. I, what, did, what did I do to harass Mr. Eden? He's talking about yes, an I incident that happened in January. That's, not, that's unfair, Your Honor. You're putting an order against me. I don't even live there, allegedly. You're putting an order against me. I've never harassed Mr. Eden. I mean, I tried to serve him. Back in to There's no proof in the file. Me. There's no proof in the file that I harassed him at all. Not I'm an attorney in the state of Washington, you're putting an order against another attorney for what? What did I do? And I've you're wanting Mr. Eden to keep the kids' his dad <laughs> away so from it. helping us. <laughs> it's or, you're, he already said, Jeff, Jeff already admitted Bill hasn't done anything to him. Oh, we're almost buds, but I want this order. And so when I go to are, court now, Your Honor, I have to be fearful that I'll be set up. When I go to court exactly now, when I walk into doing. the courthouse, I, have to, I, I will be set up by Mr. Eden. Thank you. Because now I can't go to court without feeling safe because I have a no contact order that you're putting oh, in wait place. Oh, wait a minute. This I've judge was from Thurston County and we're suing them. Isn't this that's that's I've never, even been, I've never even been named as a respondent, Your Honor, until until I filed that action in Thurston County Superior Court in November. That's why, that's why I'm named as a respondent now. I was never named as a respondent in the past. Mr. Eden says he has no problem with me. But now you're putting now all the sudden he does. That doesn't make any sense, Your Honor. But I guess so be it. Okay. Isn't there so some I've kind of appeal? In 23 and 23-000435, I've included the parties make the parties, you folks, may communicate with Jeffrey Eden in the course of litigation in Thurston County Superior Court number uh 23-2. Um 
dash zero 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 four three five dash three four. I'll also indicate, Mr. Party, the parties uh, may appear in court together, but there's not a runner. That's not the right cause number. Right. Oh, I'm sorry. You're right. It's three eight zero three eight nine four. My mistake. Kevin, why not? I can see it again, Your Honor. Twenty three dash two dash zero three eight nine four dash three. Yes, that is correct. Does that include? Does that include when I'm at the courthouse, Your Honor, about to go into the courthouse? No, there's no distance restriction. You can go to and from the courthouse at all. No, I'm saying I'm time... violating the no contact order by being there and seeing the street and outside the courthouse. No, no, you're not. If okay. it's in the course of litigation, you're absolutely not. Now, how about when we're trying to come and go from our home and he's got an illegal second driveway and we can't get out? We can't get to our home without going past him. And he's always running out there yeah, saying- and, that, and, and you can do that. You you can, again, there's not a distance restriction. There's nothing that restricts you to go into and from your home. Yes, but you are giving him an order and he is the one that gets in the road and blocks the car. Just because this guy says, I didn't do that. If you believe him, oh my God. But that is not if the you, truth. If he, if, he blocks the, if he blocks the road, that's that's something you can report to the police or obstruct or something like that. Also, Your Honor, the mental health matter sign will remain in place. Why? Uh, yeah, I mean, it, that's up to Mr. That's up to Mr. Eden. And so you heard that he put the fence up. Floodlights and the mental health matter the sign. They're going to continue taking me to court constantly. I mean, <laughs> I mean, I can't, really? I can't stop them from it's doing that. Guys. Well, Mr. Eden, you took me to court. I didn't take you to court. Okay, so hey, 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 just, what are you just, talking just, about? Just, so stupid. Like I said, they started this, not me. Okay, so just stop. It's going to end now. You're free to leave. This parties are free to leave the Zoom call. You're free to leave. Uh, email co copies of the order will be emailed to all parties. Thank you, Your Honor. And that's it for today. And if you perceive that, you know, before I go, I'm going to say this. If either party perceives these orders to be violated in any way, you can report that to the police. That can be referred to the prosecutor's office, and they can figure out where to go from there. And you're free to go there, Ms. Pardee. Thank you. Thanks, How is it that you need an order against um, the Amons? Um, well, I'm requesting it for a more permanent order, actually. I have let her bully me over two years now. You have and what now? I, I have problems talking now because of my 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 disability. disability. Uh, so please bear with me. Um, what did you ask me a question? Yes. Why do you need an order against the Amons? Because she is a bully, and he is as well. Well, again, what? Please help me. What's going on? And so who's seated to your, someone's on off camera there to your left. Who is that? My, my caregiver. Okay. Um, well, what, what have they been doing that, that needs an, that where they, you need an order against them? Okay. Well, Amanda, she goes around and she curses at me pretty, pretty abusively. Um, she follows me up, up in the elevator or uh, in the lobby or in the mail room. And she stands there and she makes her presence known. Well, what, I don't, did she say anything to you or, or what exactly? Yes, except not, not lately in the mail room. That just happened. She didn't say anything to me. Um, but uh, yes, she doesn't she does. say anything to you? Yes, she calls me names. She says all kinds of things to me. Okay. Do you I live in the same her, building? Or, or, or I don't want to repeat how she, the cuss words. She, she basically, you know, she, she takes my picture. She videotapes me, and uh, she calls me a effing retard. Um, 
she pushes her uh, her walker like she was gonna go hit me, but she doesn't. You know, um, she follows me outside uh, wherever I go um, until I get to uh, where uh, my friends are out there, and then um, she doesn't follow me anymore. Um, it's it's been very hard for me to deal with her. The thing is that she lives on the fourth floor, and I I sort of live on the second floor, and um, we have the same elevator, so. Like, if I want to go into the elevator, she'll say, you're not going into this elevator. You know, she basically just tells me that, you know, I can't, what, what I can do, what I can't do. And um, <laughs> the other, uh, the last, the last incident was uh, she walked, I was walking into the elevator. She was coming out of the elevator. Um, I waited for her to come out and she looked at me and she said, F you, really loud in my face. And I said, excuse me that's all i said next thing you know she's at the office telling them her lies or whatever she says because i don't know but i didn't go to the office the next thing you know um the office gives me a call and uh and says she's sitting out notices to both of us and uh for harassing i can't take a person doing this to me for as long as i have the management has changed. The older management took care of it, and um, I never received a notice. And whatever she would say to Amanda at that time, uh, it worked for a little while, and then she'd go back to being Amanda. Steve, on the other hand, real quickly, um, he come out uh, uh, and told it was Gail, myself, and, and Renee, all residents here at the reserve. And uh, she, he comes out and... Uh, uh, he was cussing. He said, I am going to kill anybody that causes my wife to have a heart attack. Um, and we're looking at him going, uh, we don't know what you've been told. I didn't say much except, no, Steve. I said, stop. But he wanted to punch Renee out. Um, it, it was really, really a bad scene. Um, Renee has heart troubles. And, of course, you know, she, she's not part of this. But that's why I put a restraining order on Steve. I, I, he doesn't come around me. I will say that. But I don't know what Amanda does tell her husband, so but it's pretty wanted, scary. You're, on only asking, you're only asking for an order against Amanda? What? You're no. asking for an order for both. Well, for both. Oh, okay. But I thought I heard you say Steve doesn't come around you. No, but, but he, he doesn't. But then if something happens, like she says something to him, then he comes, then he comes full barrels. And he oh, so he, he does do things to you. Huh? Yes. Yes. What? what? Okay. Are you having trouble? I'm having trouble here. Yes. Okay, so, ma'am, I'm going to need her to testify. If you want to testify again, the woman in the red shirt, zoom, zoom back out a little bit there. I mean, I know she's there. Uh, are, you, are you talking about me, sir? Yes. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So, I mean, I, I need her to answer. I don't need you to tell her what to say. Okay. So um, I'm going to hear from the Amons. Is it Amons or Ammons? Amons. Amons. I do, Your Honor. What's your response to what I just heard from uh, Ms. Forbes Webb there? Okay, well, uh, Tina's, what Tina's claiming is actually what she had been doing to me um, when I'm there at the reserve. Um, when the other manager left, they started playing these little children games when I would go come in from the day or, or leave for the night. Uh, when the elevator would open on their floor, they would do childish things like this. No, 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 no. And then make animal sounds towards me. Um, my car was parked out front in the front parking lot. And it got to the point, Your Honor, I had to move my car to the back parking lot so I could use the back doors um, because just trying to get from my car to inside the building, they would have friends yelling out, the whole group of them, Carla, Tina, and all of them, yelling out animal sounds and saying a man, duh, 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 duh. And uh, I went to the manager that was there before the uh, leave. Sir, are you the manager now or are you just another resident there? Pardon me? Are you the manager? No, no, sir. So you're both just residents there? Right, right. So... 
anyways, these guys have been actually harassing me only when I'm coming and leaving the building. I have Who are these guys? Uh, Tina, Carla, uh, the whole, the four women that all stick together and smoke together out in the front of the building. Um, they, they harass other people there too. I've got statements right here that I wasn't able to submit. Um, I also have a statement from my church and my family showing I wasn't even there through the whole summer or the holidays. So according to Tina's statement, this is done on a daily basis a daily basis and that discredits what her statement says because according to this i've been with my family uh the other side of lacy and in lakewood through the whole summer i get there about eight nine in the morning i don't come home till six your honor um and then i spent the holidays in lakewood so a lot of their statements are not bad. how close do you folks live to each other Pardon me? How close do you live to her? Uh, she lives on the second floor. I live on the fourth floor. But she's come up to my floor, this elevator incident she's talking about, and stood right in front of my elevator and just stares at me. This woman's almost six feet tall and she stands up straight. And I'm only 4'11 and a half. Um, I have heart issues. I just had surgery and was in the hospital for a week. Um I have 22 stitches and staples still in my groin, Your Honor. And she is the one who has threatened to me. Um, and she has a, a big size poodle that in the past has jumped on me. It's a very nice dog, actually. But she has no control over that dog. All right. um, and as of uh, the witnesses' statements, these two shaded ones are from a year ago because they're in my file so these are not recent incidents that have happened um i wrote i wrote uh went how to long have you lived there i went to, pardon me how long have you lived at this place I, oh, going on four years how long has she lived there was i she, do not know was she there when you got there yes she was there did you get along at first and now? Yeah, don't? actually, we were all friends. And then I started noticing how they demean people coming out of their cars or how the way that person parked. <laughs> um, look at Nancy up on the back patio, Fat Nancy. There's another Nancy who's a big woman. These women instigate like they like children, like they have nothing else to do. I have been gone to my counselor, been on put on medication for anxiety. I have reported to the manager many times. Every time there's an incident, I have reported it to her. She told me to go get a restraining order. They just happened to be, beat me to it. Um, I got medical stuff going on in my life, Your Honor. I don't need this crap either. I'm sorry for my language. Um, I've heard worse this morning. Yeah, it, it's just been an ongoing thing. But but this statement right here proves that I wasn't even around. Who's that statement summer. from? So who is that from, ma'am? This is from my church and my family, showing that I was with them in Lakewood uh -huh. and with them through the summer. So, Mister Mr. Amons, <laughs> what's your position of all of this? The, the same. It's an ongoing. It's, what they're saying that Amanda does is what they do. It's basically it. There's seven to 10, maybe 12 at a time that sit out front in a line and basically do gestures and language and everything else. And I haven't, eight months, maybe a year, I haven't had any contact with Ms. Whip. Or, or any of them. So, Ms. Um, Forbes Webb, I'm, I'm going to come back to you. Yes. You have a response to what what I just heard and what I assume you just heard. Yes, I I kind of expected it. Um, she lies about lying, and I. It's kind of this whole thing is a. Is, is, is kind of a mess because <laughs> I I raised my hand to you to tell, uh, took an oath uh, to tell the truth. Yeah, so did they. And I don't understand what's happening here as far as 
she's she's a little bit i thought she had mental issues so i didn't try to push but now i can't i can't do this she she's 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 lied about everything except i do have a black poodle that she wants to kill because she said that well, if he jumps that again, on please. her if he jumps oh i'm sorry did i interrupt you um if he jump if my poodle jumps on her um it will loosen her stints also um we've never been friends not once never I just want to live where I live and be be content and not have to worry about getting on the elevator or going into the lobby or getting my mail out of the mail room. I I can't take this. Your Honor, may I speak in a minute? Okay. So you can just testify, right? Give me just a minute. Go ahead, sir. This order came after my wife had went and made a complaint at the office about Tina. And it seems like a few days later, a week later, we get the restraining order after she had made a written statement to the office. What was it? What was the content of that statement? Harassment. And I called the police, Your Honor. And we also. did call the police. So her statement saying my husband threatened her if we called the police, that, that, that's so untrue. We're the ones who called the police and Officer Bell responded to us. Ms. Uh, Forbes Webb, what's, what, what say you to that? They said I, they called the police about you. Is that true yeah, or they, not? They did it. They didn't call the police on me. I, I've seen no police. Um, uh, nothing. Yeah. Why, why did they do that? Sorry? Why did they call the police on you? I, I, I wouldn't know because I didn't have the police called on me. I the didn't see a didn't... police officer. He, They're he... telling me the police didn't respond. Is that correct? Right. Officer Bell said it just sounds like you got a crappy neighbor. And if any neighbors that didn't get along, or if he, physical and he altercation. said that our statement is in the dispatch, the cap, if the judge wanted to hear it, but he didn't see any reason to write a uh, uh, a, a statement and get a number for it. We had Got it. Here, so, you. so your caregiver I, to your to your left there, ma'am, does she live there in the building also, or is she? She does, Your Honor, um, but she also has witnessed. Quite a few things and knows Amanda better than I, I think. I don't know. So, you how long have you lived there in, that, in this building, ma'am? Me or yes. Carla? Yes. Me. Oh, I have lived here. Uh, not, I'm going to be going on my third year in, um, Feb um, February, in February. Um, this right. place has only been open for three years. And so, um, the latest told me you guys have lived here. For four years, was you there when it opened? No, just after it opened, and we're yeah. due in February to renew our lease. If oh, well, if, April, April. The manager said it would determine the outcome of this whether they're going to renew with us, and I think that's a lot of this. These women are just trying to get us evicted because they don't care for us. But like I said, Your Honor, I, I've got statements from my church and my family showing right. I haven't even been there for eight months, six months, except to come home and leave in the morning. All right. Ms. Forbes Webb, I'll, I'll come, let me come to you. Go ahead. I'll hear from you. I, I, when I, did this all, did this all come out of the blue or what? No. A lot of it doesn't she, make that much sense to me. Well, sorry, I didn't hear what you said. What? You said a lot of it does not make much sense to me. No, it doesn't. And I, and I, myself as well, I don't understand why she finds me this interesting. But I will tell you that I am not the only one. Um, there are many people here in, in the building that don't go outside and smoke that have problems with her. Um, actually, you know, my, my, my friend has a, a, get it, has a temporary restraining order as we speak. Um, she just is a bully. I don't know why she's a bully, but she is a bully. And when you have 
health problems. I'm in palliative care. You have health problems. It makes it a lot worse when somebody upsets you. And uh, I, 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 I will say she was accurate about uh, just a few months. A few months, she was leaving in the morning, coming back in the evening. And that was nice because there was no problem with her attacking anyone here in the, at the reserve. Um, she's a frequent flyer, as the management said. I don't know what they mean really by that, but I'm assuming she's at the office every day. I, I, I don't, I'm not a complainer in, in general, but uh, I, 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 I will tell you that since you put a temporary on her, it's been so relieving to me to know that she can't talk to me, she can't approach me, and this is that I have to say it has brought a lot of de-stressing on my part, and I thank you for that. All right. And that was an or temporary order for 10 feet. Right. Well, yeah. Because I, 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 you're on a mask. Not just yet. No. Okay. Go ahead, ma'am. You wanted to say something? Um, I have health problems also. Um, open what heart sort of facility is this? Pardon? What sort of living establishment is this? It, it's a 55 and older, but there are people in there that have care providers or right. they do physical therapy, and it just depends on their own, what's going on in their own uh, area. Um, I do bingo um, on Fridays. I go to church every Sunday, Bible study on Wednesdays, Your Honor. Um, I also, another, some statements I have here from other residents, I help elderly bring in their groceries when I'm there. I um, I have a whole list of phone calls of elderly residents that call me when they need help for something. And I have to be careful what I do because I can't lift over five pounds. Uh, I have a pen to pen. I have an in order aneurysm. So me bumping into her and doing a, this is just outrageous. I mean, she is really fibbing about all this she really is she really what she's fibbing about me supposedly being a bully running into her uh -huh. it, this is actually what she was doing to me and uh, that's why i was going to the manager and complaining finally when the manager gave her a write-up um as me as well for her to stay away from me right for her not to come near me um, and everything. And uh, like I said, it got to the point I had to move my car from the front of the building where the mini mall is in McDonald's, forcing me not even to go out front out there to the back. So I don't see so, him. I don't okay. associate Hang on just a second. Ma'am, did you get a, a write-up from the manager? We both Ms. did. Um, she, and the manager actually said, well, this will help you with your restraining order. Because I was getting a restraining order before before this, um, and I so after she gave me the notice, I went in to, and I of course I got the temporary. I went in and talked to her. Her name was Carrie, and I um, I asked her how how is it that this is supposed to help me with the restraining order? She goes, oh I don't know. I thought you guys would patch it up. I go, you know she's been bothering me for two years, and she what nodded with. Just, what did the write ups? Nodded. What did the write ups say? Stay away from each other. Sorry. Thank you. Yes, yeah, stay away. Don't approach. It's right. the other way. Go the other right. way. So here's what's going to happen today. Uh, both of you, all three of you, or all four of you, I guess. There's kind of a ghost witness off camera there. Um, you all seem like nice people to me. For whatever reason, something happened where you can't really get along. You have said you've been indicated from the manager that you should stay away from them and them probably the same. You've also told me that since this temporary order was in place, um, uh, you know, things have been fine. But, uh, you know, ma'am and Ms. Forbes Webb, I'm going to speak to you specifically when you're the petitioner and you come to the court. You kind of bear a burden of proof to show by a preponderance the evidence that it's more likely than not. It's not beyond a reasonable doubt. You know, based on what I've heard, both from you and from um, Ms. Amons and Mr. Amons, you know, at this point, I'm unable to find by a preponderance of the evidence that harassment activity has um, occurred. 
Sounds like things have gotten better since the temporary. So the temporary order is going to stay today. Sounds like you both have been engaged in a course of conduct, at least over the past. Well, whenever that temporary was ordered, I would just encourage you both to keep that up and stay away from each other. And if any additional problems arise, you can come back. But for the moment, I'm not going to enter. I'm not going to enter an order. Does that make sense, Ms. Ms. Forthweb? You understand all that? He denied it. You can ask him why. I'm not too sure how I'm talking to here. I think the woman in red there kind of understood what I was saying. And I. Yeah. You're denying the order. Right. At this time, yes. With leave to bring it back if additional problems arise. But I, you know, based on everything I've heard, I think I can rely on all of you to keep a distance from each other. <sighs> yeah, I know. Okay, well, you said we can come back, so. This testimony oh. from other folks in the she in the place would, would help. You know, I hear you say, well, that. Well, you know, I do, but I do right. have. Let me finish, did... man. And again, I don't, I have no idea how many people I'm talking to. Witnesses here? Have you witnesses here? What's happening? Okay, whatever, this is all. All right. So again, that's going to be it for today. And then a copy of this will get emailed to you, both of you. Thank you. And you're free to leave. Thank you. You're free to Forbes Web. Not at this time. say you get the patience of me. And then everybody, let's be on your best behavior out there, everybody. Yes, sir. So how is it you need an order from... Um, Against Ms. Davis and Mr. French. It's just the option, Mr. Mr. Davis and Ms. French. Have a good day, Your Honor. Thank you, you folks too. Uh, sorry about that. That's okay. Mr. Davis and Ms. French. Uh, so give me just a minute here. Yeah, I'm going to need to get, get, call your case up here. Go ahead. First, you can start with uh, Mr. Davis, and then uh, did I get that right? And then Ms. French. What's this all about? Okay, uh, it, it all stems from the same incident. So I'm just going to. Try to just recite the incident to you so you don't have to keep going through it. Uh, That's all right. I've been with my wife, Valerie, for uh, eight years, going on nine years now. This is her daughter and her daughter's boyfriend. Uh, there has is that been... you, ma'am, back there? That's Valerie. You can come on up come on if you up. want to. Uh, I, like I said, I've been uh, with Valerie for uh, eight years, and uh, in the beginning, things were not as bad, but this has been an this has been an ongoing situation of her and her daughter specifically not getting along very well. A lot of money issues are going on, but let's just get to this incident. We haven't been getting along well for several months and uh, uh, they called, Ashley called and asked if they could come up and uh, get the presents we had for the girls. Uh, Valerie told her separately from me, we said, I said, no, this is a good time, Valerie has took a fall she's injured she doesn't really want company right now we'll set up a time to meet you guys after christmas we don't want you guys coming to our house and we don't want to go to your house because we feel there could be problems december 26 i got a knock on the door i went to the door it was dark it's hard to see very well but ashley was at the door i opened the door i said ashley you didn't call uh we don't want company right now you need to leave and we'll call you uh, you know, when we're ready to meet up with you. And she said, oh, hell no. She said, I'm coming in. And as I tried to stand there and block her, even as much as pushing her to prevent her from coming into my house, she said, come on, girls. That's when I realized she had her daughters with her. Shiloh was behind them. They pushed their way in, knocked, didn't knock me down, but they just pushed me out of the way, came into the house, uh, made a big production of coming up to Ballard going, are you okay? They were making a fake show of her being in danger. My wife has never been in danger from me, and she can testify to that on her own. This was all a ruse on their part, trying to cause trouble. Uh, they would very much like to get me uh, out, of, uh, out of the way so they can take advantage of Valerie uh, financially. Uh, even now, we're making truck payments for her because <laughs> Valerie's a co-signer. So they came in the house as they pushed their way into the house. And uh, then Shiloh told me the reason he's on this is he told me that he was going to kick my ass. And uh, if anything ever further happened, he said he'd be back threatening violence to me. 
And that's the sum of it. Um, who wants to speak first, either Mr. Davis or Ms. French? I can't hear you. Can you say that again, please? Yes, I can. Perfect. Oh, okay. Sorry about that, Your Honor. Who wants to speak uh, first? I can speak first. Go ahead. Okay. So, um, yeah, we had, we, they had told us in the beginning that they didn't want us to come over. And actually, me and my wife, had agreed to that. And then um, my wife had spoken with her mother and sent her pictures of her injuries. And we, in turn, because we have a very open dialogue with our children, um, she had shared with our children what, you know, the injuries look like. And we're trying to explain to them, this is the reason why grandma didn't want anyone to come over because she was in pain. And then our kids saw how bad the injury was in reports to how she got injured. And they were the ones that were worried about the grandmother. So with them putting up a case, we caved. We said, okay, we'll go see your grandmother so you guys can see that she's okay. We got there. I didn't see the incident. All I heard was my wife scream, don't effing touch me. Um, then me and my um, middle child came around the corner into the house. He's leaving a huge portion out of his behavior at the time that my family was there. He was verbally abusive. And like I said, to my wife's response, my, my girls don't say don't touch me if they haven't been touched. I still didn't react or came in um, and he was in the process of yelling obscenities to my wife and both Valerie Hayes at the time, calling them very rude names in front of my daughters. My youngest daughter was standing in the entryway and she was crying and he continued to verbally abuse both. He was mostly verbally abusing my mom. her mother. And then that's when my girls had escalated and didn't agree with how he was talking to her. Um, and then they escalated. He continued to, to break things in front of my kids to, to scare my children. You know, the whole time I was very under control. I didn't raise my voice. I didn't even swear, but I did say when he was starting to push his limits with how he was treating both my mother-in-law and my, my, my wife, I, I had made it clear that I was starting to get irritated on his behavior in front of my kids. Um, that's pretty much it. Other than that, our, our interactions are very, very limited. Me and my, me and my family see them maybe once or twice a year. Um, in regards to them talking on the phone, I don't ever get involved with what her and mother and her speak about because it involves, you know, property residents. Um, and I feel in my opinion, it should be the same for him because he has no claim to any of it. So he shouldn't have anything to say to Valerie about Ashley or her. I normally never put my two cents in. I kind of just leave it between them. But um, within the last couple of months, things have kind of boiled over into where I just didn't accept how he was getting involved with the purchase of our home from her mother. And also that like putting a wedge between Ashley and the grandchildren. Usually it's customary we see them, but usually the only time we ever really see them is Thanksgiving and Christmas. So for my family, it was really unusual after her current injury that she didn't want to see her grandchildren. And a lot of the correspondence that happens between my children and Ashley actually go through the only mobile device that they have in the home, and it's his. He has sent numerous messages that misconstrued it or twisted what their grandmother had said to my children, not even to me, to my children. <laughs> um, and still, I don't, I don't get involved. I don't say anything. But in this particular instance, because we were at the home, his behavior towards the women in the house, I have all girls as well, they were traumatized. And so that's when I made it very clear that his behavior towards my family was not acceptable. And that's pretty much it. But other than that, um, our, our contact is extremely limited. I don't hardly ever call them. They talk about financial responsibilities. My wife just had a major back surgery. Um, almost 50% of her spine got fused back in July. So she's not, she isn't supposed to be working, lifting heavy things. So him with the statement saying that she shoved past him, she can't even live. She can barely, she's still going through a lot of things medically. Um, and for her to respond and my daughter saying that she witnessed him shove her in the back. What kind of man does that to a woman who just had back surgery? You know, and, and Hang on just a second. I'm going to stop you. Let me hear from um, Ms. French. Ms. French, could you raise your right hand, please? You swear and affirm the information and testimony you provide will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, sir. Go ahead. What's your position on all of this? Okay. Well, I wrote out a little something um, just because this is a very emotional for me. I'm very shocked to see my mother actually in this courtroom. Um, but honestly, um, 
Okay, thank you, Your Honor. I just want to say this is a complete waste of your time. We are here to just talk today because I I filed a police report on Mark Nicolich for assaulting me the day after Christmas on December 26. Shiloh Davis and our family stopped by my mom's house to wish her a Merry Christmas. My mom had a horrible fall and her leg is in extremely bad shape and unable to drive. I also have been unable to drive. On July 3rd, I had a severe ground mal seizure that resulted in my spine bursting, and I had a very big spinal fusion done from my tailbone halfway up my back. I miss my mom very much, and since my mom can't drive to me, I wanted to see her. When we arrived, I wasn't sure if they were home because all the windows, like I didn't, so I had my family sit in the car that is around 15 feet from the front door. I started to walk up her ramp, and I heard and saw her dogs barking through the front door. I never rang the doorbell and I never knocked on the door. And then Mark walked out of the living room and was walking to the front door. When I saw him, I turned around and walked my family to come in. <clears throat> I turned around and Mark answered the door. He said, you should have effing called first. I said, we are here to wish my mom Merry Christmas. He turned around like he was going back to the living room and I turned around and was holding the front door. Lillian and Emily were walking past me when Mark came up behind me and shoved me into the front door and I yelled at him, don't effing touch me. Then he <clears throat> says, Valerie, your stupid family is here. At this point, Shiloh was walking up to the house and I told him Mark had just shoved me. And once we got into the house, I um, walked into the living room. My girls were already in the living room. My mom, um, like I said, she's been on a lot of medication. My mom's been on a lot of medication, okay? And when I saw her, she looked extremely over-medicated. She didn't know what was going on. I was like, Mom, we're here to wish you Merry Christmas. She was very dazed, confused. That's when Mark started screaming at her. Um, and I, he was just trying to get us, like, and then he said, I'm going to call the cops. And I said, go ahead. Let's call, like, and then at that point, he broke something. He picked something up, slammed something on, and something broke. And then we my husband went to go comfort our daughters because they were behind the couch crying. And, um, at that point I got my mom by her, like, listen, sir, I haven't been able to talk to my mom over the phone without it being on speakerphone for the last eight years. Me and my mom used to have an amazing relationship. Me and the girls would be over there three, two, three times a week before this gentleman became into our lives. Shiloh's Shiloh's been in my life for I've known Shiloh for 15 years. We've been together for 10. And for this man to say that he is an acquaintance, that is a lie. Straight up a lie. We He is, anyways, I'm sorry. I don't mean to ramble on, but they're like, my daughter had um, on the speakerphone like a month ago with me and my mom was in the bathroom talking to my daughter. She, my daughter can't even talk to my mom without being on speakerphone. My mom's hiding in the bathroom. She said, I'm okay to talk now. So I'm terrified that this man is doing something to her like she has no Hang on, man. that's not the only thing i'm here today he's asking for an order okay. right okay. Okay. i either say yes or no to the order he's asking that's the only thing in front of me here today okay. um i do i think you've addressed that i'm going to go back to him for a final word and then uh, um so let me hear from the family hang on just a second you're what i think who i think is your mother has been a little demonstrative um anything you wish to add ma'am go ahead okay one of the things um, everybody's failing to, to, to add to this is uh, the main reason that we um, are, well, that Mark's filing this um, uh, restraining order is uh, uh, when uh, the uh, two sheriffs came to our home that uh, were sent to our home by Ashley filing a, a, a assault charge against Mark. They were there for at our house for almost an hour. Uh, they were the gentlemen that uh, told us that they thought we should file a restraining order. Okay. It was not our idea to begin with. Okay, so here and, and that's uh, that's the main reason that Mark decided to file the restraining order, not because we hate my daughter, not because of anything, but that 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 he had a a fear of what was going on and that, that, that this would escalate more into what was going on, not trying to get back. We just want to be safe. We I just want safe. things to be safe right now. And that, that, that both of these sheriffs, no one else, they had nothing to do with family, family, um, 
garbage, family, whatever's been going on. They didn't fear for my life. They didn't um, fear for Ashley's life, but they did fear for what was possibly going to escalate behind what was going on that they could see behind not only Ashley filing the assault charge, but also what was going on in the household. Right. And so I sure. just want to testify. I did hear things that were said in the in the house when this happened. And no, he didn't say this stupid family or whatever. That wasn't said, right. Ashley. Come on. So here, um, but yeah. he did talk to her about uh, you know this was this was an, a, a point of anger at this point. Nobody likes to have someone just push their way into a house, whether it's your house or someone else's house. This was not a good night. No. And it was a lot of a lot of hyper things, but no one wants something to become worse and worse. And yeah, it is a fear to have someone push their way into your house and heaven forbid nobody wants it to escalate any further than right. that. And so, that's what this is about. Um, here, here's where I'm at with this, ma'am and sir. I'm going to read you the definition of unlawful harassment. A harassment is an unlawful, a knowing and willful course of conduct directed at a specific person that seriously alarms, harasses, or is detrimental to such person and serves no legitimate lawful purpose. A course of conduct, and this is going to be important with regard to my ruling, is um, a pattern of conduct composed of a series of acts over a period of time, however short, evidencing continuity of purpose. You know, you said something that I resonated with me and you said this was not a good night. Clearly it was not. But in order to get an anti-harassment order, you need to show a pattern over of a series of actions over a period of time. So like if he keeps coming the next day, this yeah. happened, come the next day and the next day after that, then it's that would rise to the level of harassment. It's over eight years. Right. This and so I can't enter I can't yeah. enter an order until, you know, something actually question, yeah? does happen. Yes, you can, but you're going to wait till I'm done. Okay. And uh, um, and so. I'm not sure what the dynamics are between you and your daughter or you and your stepdaughter or anything like that. Uh, um, you know, I'm going to talk to them in a minute, too, about going that they, they need to respect your boundaries. If you don't want them to come over, they, they it's not appropriate for you to go over if they don't want you to come over for whatever reason, even if it's a bad reason. Uh, um, but, um, you know, go ahead. You wanted to say something. I'll hear from you. Just, just I just want to ask one thing. Short of being able to get this uh, in a harassment or how do we protect ourselves against them when they come to the house and just push well, away? If this continues to happen, and again, if they, uh, um, you can make a police report if you think that they've done something criminal in that particular incident, if they, you know, pushed you in, or entered your house unlawfully or something like that, and then they, apparently you we did speak. We don't want them to come. We don't want to call them. Yeah, we just don't want them to come over. Okay. Well, I think at this point they know that. And so, Ms., so, and I'm going to go to them and say, okay. clearly you understand about how your mother and stepfather yeah, feel at the moment. Yeah, and you. if, uh, um, you know, right now, I think I probably telegraphed and I'm going to deny the order. But if this keeps up, if you keep showing up there where they don't want you, then we'll come back well, and then we will look at an order. Do you understand that, Ms.? Um, yeah. Yes, Your Honor. Get Ms. French and Mr. Davis, and that's unfortunate. Uh, um, I, you know, it's always, it's never, it's never great when uh, um, family relationships fall out. But uh, but that's where we're at here right now. So I'm not prepared to enter an order today. But like I say, if this sort of thing keeps up and I don't know what, then you, they can come back and we will talk about a court order. Does that make uh, sense? Well, I have one question too. And Thanks. so your mother, and you seem upset by this, Ms. French, which I understand. Why would, why would uh, both of the sheriffs, who were very, very nice when yeah. they came, even recommend? That's, that's an excellent question. But I don't answer. But I will say that I will see this, though, ma'am. A lot of times in situations, they recommend going to the court. And then when the time they get here, when it comes to me, I'll make a finding that that okay. doesn't rise to the level I of understand. harassment. I mean, yeah. yeah. And they're, they're well-intentioned and well-meaning. Yeah. And they probably decide, well, we're not going to pursue yeah. a crime here. But you, I get your point, you try right. this. Thank you. And I will tell you that if a pattern, pattern develops, yes. then you come will. back. And we'll, well, then we'll take then, then an order would be appropriate. I Thank think. you, Your Honor. Does that make sense? Yes. Because we don't want them there at all. So if anything okay. happens, we'll go so, from there. Sam. And so hang on just a second there, ma'am. You can stay seated, please. Yes, I'm released just yet. And, uh, um, and again, I just want you to see how upsetting apparently this is to your oh, daughter. Oh, yeah. We've been through this. Okay, do you, you can stop. Okay. I'm just talking to you. And I don't know whether you can develop a relationship or preserve the relationship or not, but that's kind of where we're at here right now. Okay. That's it for today. Thank you. Copies Honor. of this will get emailed to folks. Thank you, Your Honor. Sir. 
I was, okay. I, was I, I still don't understand why this man wasn't pressed charges against for assault. Okay, so, again, again, you know, I, I don't have an answer for you there. The only thing that's in front of me here today, and don't leave until everyone's done, everybody, is they asking for an order against you and Mr. Um, Davis. Yeah. I'm not giving them that order right now. You know, right. explanations for, you know, why or why they weren't prosecuted or whether they found there was, I, I, I can't speak to that. How can I find so, out? Let's call Thurston County. If they, if they, well, you can talk to the, I mean, the short answer is, I don't know. You can talk to whatever law enforcement agency responded. You can talk to, I don't know what prosecutor's office this is, whether it's the municipality or the county. But um, the only thing in front of me here today is whether or not an order is appropriate. I'm finding it's not. And so that's kind of the end of it here for today. Thank you. You have a wonderful day. You're free to leave the Zoom call. You're free to go.